Remember the bizarre 3D animation quality of the 90s? Well, I don't. I wasn't born yet. But you can't deny the strange, uncanny yet charming vibe that these old, decrepit animation programs can produce. Today I, a zoomer, am going to get my grubby little hands on some of the weirdest 1990s CGI software I can find. So join me as we explore these odd programs that are lost to time and create some 1990s masterpieces with them. Created by Microsoft in 1995, 3D Movie Maker is an animation program that allows kids to create goofy little scenes with pre-made characters and objects. It is very clear that this program has some incredible meme potential, as shown by many old YouTube videos such as this absolute masterpiece. And so, I downloaded and booted up this program, and to my absolute surprise, despite it being made for Windows 95, it can still run on Windows 11. We hop onto the program, and are greeted by this wacky little guy named McZ. Nice to finally meet you face to face! <laughs> we then watch in horror as he shoves items into this seemingly bottomless bag, and then he gets on a shopping cart roller coaster, and then lands on a sidewalk and dies. <laughs> But anyway, we end up at a theater booth while Mick Z is absolutely jamming it up and he asks if we want to watch or make a movie. I decided to start off by watching a movie and the one called Bongo really struck my eye. After getting mentally scarred from whatever that was, I leave the movie theater only to be met with more nightmare fuel. This is Melanie, and she's the tutorial guy that's going to teach me how to create a 3D logo. I'm first prompted to choose a background, and then the text, as well as the animation for the text, and after putting it all together, I ended up with this. Thanks, Melanie! After that, I decide it's finally time for me to create my own movie with actors and dialogue from scratch. I selected a scene and started by adding this kind young looking gentleman from the list of actors. I definitely struggled to figure out how to maneuver the tools and options at first, and it was quite finicky. It took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to learn how to change my dude's outfit and give him some animations, but boy was he vibing once I did. I then scrolled through the list of dialogue sounds and elected to record my own. Wow, I sure hope this plane doesn't blow up. I then added some rats and learned how to change the scene, and from there it was pretty much smooth sailing. And without further ado, I present to you my movie. Wow, I sure hope this plane doesn't blow up. Hey, that was excellent! Honestly, I really liked 3D Movie Maker. It was really charming and you could tell the developers really cared about making a fun experience for the user. My only wish is that they removed Melanie. So I chanced upon this article that shows some very beautiful old CGI art, and they all have one thing in common. They were made with a program called Pavre. So naturally, I boot up this program without doing any research whatsoever, and I'm immediately jump scared by the realization that this program is entirely code-based and has no visual interface. But fear not, because the knowledge I gained from my 9th grade programming class is going to come in absolute clutch here. The program starts you out with pre-made code that displays funny little images, and I just absolutely adore the noise it makes whenever you run the code. I decided to use the file called Taurus as the base plate for my own render. I removed all the objects in the code, which removed them from the scene, and I began messing around with random things I could do, like adding this pretty little rainbow! I then was able to change the ground texture and add a funny little blue pancake. I then made a huge discovery that I could change the audio that plays when it renders, and I decided to replace it with a way better sound. 
It was really fun changing the code and then getting to be surprised by whatever the result of that change was, like accidentally making my pancake look like this. And after about an hour of writing code slash borrowing from other projects, I present to you my grand creation. They call him the Donut of Truth. Just look at how cute he is. Havre was actually really fun to use, and it was quite cool to see such a uniquely different CGI software. You know Blender? The greatest modern 3D software out there? Yeah, the first version of it was released in 1995. Unlike the other two programs I discussed, Blender 1.0 was painfully difficult to get my hands on as it was made for a prehistoric operating system. But luckily, there's a half hour long tutorial on how to get this thing running by a YouTuber called Alpenstorm. Thank you! But I now have a working emulator with Blender 1.0 installed and ready to use. Now let me just tell you, this program was horrendous. The similarities between modern day Blender were there, but the layout was just so much less intuitive and it felt like nothing made sense. I couldn't render the scene because I was missing a camera, but after adding a camera, I still couldn't render the scene because I was missing a camera. It took me an entire hour just to figure out how to add a material to an object. Half the time I'd just accidentally make everything in the scene disappear. But once I got it somewhat under my belt, I was able to make a pretty little house with a tree. I then decided to add some text to my scene, and it immediately crashed on me. So those were some of the weirdest 90s CGI programs I could find. I definitely was pleasantly surprised by how cool and unique some of these programs are, and I hope they never get completely buried by time, except for Blender 1.0, that was horrible.